Hey, welcome back. This is episode number 13 of Let's Play Dragon Age. We are here on the King's Highway, which, as you can tell, is ancient and not in the best state right now, but it's still pretty cool. I believe this was built by the Tevinter Imperium when they ruled these lands. Just as the Romans built a number of walls and cool things when they ruled England. Although nothing quite like this, but I guess the aqueducts could kind of compare. Um, it's kind of cool too how like it's damaged here, which is why you have to go all the way through Lothering. I can't just keep walking north, but it's a nice stop anyway. It's a good location to build a town. I like even the windmill here. Is You can't go in it, you can't do anything with it, but it's a nice bit of backdrop. It makes the place seem a little more real. But our time in Lothering is done. So we're going to stop loitering around and head up north. Quest completed. Oh, the Lothering quest, I think, right? Yep. Gather your party and venture forth? Yes, please. Um, what is this? Are we going to choose a location or just venture forth? Maybe another cutscene coming up? Oh, a dream. There she is, the Archdemon. And there's our camp. We'll be spending quite a lot of time here. And the camp is just Bad right outside dreams. wherever you are. It seems so real. Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. It makes a lot of sense, too, because Duncan mentioned that he was sure it was a blight, even though uh, he couldn't convince the king. That's because he can't tell them, oh, I see a demon in my, or an Archdemon in my dreams, because in order to explain it, he'd have to reveal the joining ritual, and that he's not allowed to do. Yeah, why didn't Duncan just tell everyone that? He did. He said he felt the Archdemon's presence. Everyone just assumed he was guessing. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. It's kind of cool that you have a, a guide who's, you know, he's only been the warden, I think, the warden's a couple months, but uh, at least you're not totally alone in this. Um, I'm not frightened. I screamed like a little girl. Duncan said he thought I had someone in my room. <laughs> <laughs> not embarrassing at all. Nope. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. Oh, I want to go back to sleep. All right. Oh, a new quest. What is this? Enchantment? Bunch of quests. Oh, is this from... Yeah. All right. What is enchantment? Talk to the dwarves. Oh, Bodin and Sandal, the two dwarves from outside of Lothering, seem to pull up their wagon on the outskirts of the camp. There we go. Knew we'd see him again. So a lot of these are DLC. Some of which we'll do in due time. We'll do we'll do all of it eventually. Ah, but it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Not all at once. Bodon Fedic, at your service once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Um, I don't think you can actually tell him no, but I wouldn't want to. You're free to stay, just mind yourselves. Wonderful. Thank the gentleman, won't you, boy? Thank you, sir. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. Uh-oh. Oh. I oh. thought the game froze for a second there. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. Um, so what's your story, exactly? Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. 
I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Why'd you leave? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. And did you steal them? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tags. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. Um, yeah, I guess better to do something with them than leave them to rot. I can agree with that. That's exactly how I see it. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never looked back. Probably smart. Huh. So that's interesting. It's too bad she wasn't more sensible. He probably could have just given her the bracers for free and everything would have been okay. But, uh, yeah. Fascinating story. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Uh, heard any rumors? I hear the Dwarven King is passed on. Oh. Old as he was, he was probably poisoned or assassinated. That's how the Dwarves normally go out, isn't it? That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. I think he says that phrase at the end of every rumor you ask him. That's what I've heard on the road. I mean, it's... Okay. Um, so where do these goods come from? Not the deep roads. Look, we... We don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the law's tags, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the darkspawn coming. What do you mean? People flee from the blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose it's better than having the Darkspawn take it all. Especially where it comes to, like, weapons and armor. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times, indeed. Dark times, my friend. It seems dangerous, though. Like, at any minute, you could be in a town when it gets attacked by Darkspawn. It doesn't seem like him and Sandal are fierce warriors. Uh, you didn't mention your son in your tale. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here, I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think, and he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. He may not be my blood, true, but I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. Um... That was generous of you. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boys are natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery maddled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. Seems like a good uh, relationship there. He seems like a... Good father for him, handles the business end, and his son does uh, the enchanting. All right, let me see your wares. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. All right. Yeah, the game is stuttering again, but 
Now, I think he actually gets different wares as you go through the game, maybe? Or maybe he just has a bunch of good stuff already. He definitely has a lot. I'll give him that. Um, okay, so these things that are cost nothing are uh, gifts for the DLC that I have installed. And these are just other gifts you can give them. Backpack. That increases inventory capacity by 10. It's very expensive, though. But we probably should buy it. We'll go through and do all the, uh, what do they call that? Festive day or something? Something day. It's basically April Fool's, the equivalent. I think they released that DLC during April Fool's. A lot of runes, which are nice, they give uh, extra damage to your weapons or to your stav. And the spell resistance is a... Uh, Armor rune, I believe. Some nice rings. Some pendants. The spell ward is one of the best amulets in the game, I'm pretty sure. Um, especially for mages. However, it is very pricey. There's a nice collar. An enchanter's cap. Some shields. Alright, so there's the rest of the Blood Dragon armor too. That's another DLC that I have. Um, you can get... You get one piece automatically, the Blood Dragon plate. And the rest you get from this guy. We're probably not going to buy anything now though. In fact, we can... Can you... Equip everybody in camp? I think you can. Yes, you can. That's very helpful. So let's give him this better plate now that we up to strength. Nice and silver. Uh, we'll give him these boots because they're better. These gloves are better. And any hats? Not really. What about Sten? Sten could probably use some of this stuff too. Boots. Gloves. All right, there we go. Clothing you can give to pretty much anybody. It's kind of cool because there's not a lot of clothing in the game, but it doesn't have any stats, unfortunately. Uh, I'm gonna put my mage's robes for now. Six defense isn't really that much, and the extra willpower and magic can't hurt. All right, what about enchanting? Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a, what was he now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. What enchantments does he do? He can fold lyrium into almost any weapon or piece of armor. Though naturally some of the more extravagant materials will take more lyrium than others. It's a process that some of the master smiths back in Orzammar will perform. But my boy here is just as adept at it. Isn't that right, boy? Enchantment! And there you have it. Alright, let's give it a try. Enchantment! I don't think I can actually enchant anything. Yeah. I can do Blight Blood, which is one of those weapons I'm not going to use for a while, because it's very good. And Oathkeeper... Where do we get that from? That might be... something we found somewhere. So we could go ahead and upgrade that. It only has one slot. We can do spell resistance, fire damage, or electricity damage. I'm pretty sure you can upgrade armor, too. Um, let's give it electricity damage. Another stutter. There we go. Alright. What does he have to talk to me about? If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. Goodbye. It must be from the, uh, the joke day thing, whatever it's called. That's right, this little lake here. A little, uh, bucket to get some water. I used to always save my games up here, I think. Morgan has her little camp away from things. What do you wish of me? Uh, I'd like to ask you something. If you must. How did you become a shape changer? 
I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Your mother has been doing this for a long time then. Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. She has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? Can you change into other human forms as well? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. Can anyone become a shape changer? Anyone with sufficient will. But the act of transformation is a magical one. It is a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. Indeed, you could learn the spells required if I cared to teach you. Um, so that's actually something I did become a shape changer in my very first playthrough before, but uh, it's actually not that good. It's it's cool. It's a lot of fun being able to turn into like a spider or a bear or a plague of locusts, but um, you can't use any other spells, which kind of defeats the purpose of being a mage. So unless you're really going for a pure shape changing build, which you probably want to invest more in like strength and constitution, then there's not really a main point to being to uh, shape changing. It is cool running around as a bear though, and uh, with dog in your party, you can like attack the same person and use your fierce animal attacks. Uh, do you spend a lot of time as an animal? There were nights when the wilds called to me, it is true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, proud shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human, I am under no illusions to the contrary. And what do other animals think of you when you're changed? They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus, they cannot speak, even were I to ask. I've never heard of magic like that before. No? Tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded law from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could. But as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. Um, isn't that sort of magic open to abuse? Not all apostates use the forbidden blood arts. Maleficarum do, but to condemn all who do not fall under the circle's thrall for the sake of what might be is a dangerous path to walk. There are those who look on the word apostate as meaning freedom. It's an interesting philosophy. One will have to think about some more because it's definitely true that you should never judge a group of people or punish a group of people by what some of them do. But at the same time, the risks are so high, it's a fine line to walk. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? Um... That would just make you angry, I think. No doubt it would. But enough of such talk, let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. It seems useful, though. You could turn into like a swarm of flies and just escape from any trap. All right. Anything else around here? I thought there was a chest you could put all your stuff in. Do I have to buy that or? I don't know. I could have sworn. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is no chest. 
to look it up afterwards. All right, who is this guy, Levy Dryden? You're a hard man to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy, Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins, Levy the trader. This is part of the DLC, I think. Uh, I've never heard of you. Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. What promise did Duncan make you? My family... Well, past a bit checkered, to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Olin banished the wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. Uh, what happened next? It's hard to say. After King Olin died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one, and our family was on the run. Hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. Uh, so what favor did you ask of Duncan? I asked for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honor. I've never heard of Soldier's Peak. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honor. Uh, what do you need from me? I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldier's Peak, but the place, well, they say it's haunted. And it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it at least? Um, I'll think about it. All right. So that is one of the pieces of DLC which we can do a little later on. Not gonna worry about that yet. I think we'll probably spend the rest of this episode just talking to some of these people and seeing how they're doing. I really want to know where that chest is, though. Oh, why you little? Uh, are you harassing my dog? Me harassing your dog? I should say it's the other way round. Your furry friend here took offence at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Uh. Well, he is a war dog. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. Wonder if I got influence with the dog there. Nope. Wonder if you can get influence with the dog. Probably. How are you doing, Liliana? Yes. I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. This vision of yours. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. You dreamed of the blight? I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day... The rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. Maybe, or maybe it was just a flower. Um... I am going to say that's just wishful thinking, Liliana. I suppose you will never understand. No one does. It's alright. I know what I know. 
and no one will ever make that untrue. All right. Oh, I got disapproval for that. Oh well. Yes. Anything else she wants to talk about? Well, here I am. What was life like in the Chantry Cloister? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. Condescending? How so? When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Uh, I think I prefer your ideas of the Chantry. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. That probably got me some approval back. Yep, a little bit. All right, I think she had one more topic to discuss. Yes. Well, here I am. I like how you can say I think you should go. I guess you can dismiss her. I think only Alistair and Morgan. As far as I know, are the only necessary members of the party? Not really sure. Uh, what would someone like you be doing in Lothering's Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? Um, they don't teach you how to fight in the cloister, do they? Did you think I was always a cloistered sister? The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. Affirmed? We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste, and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. So your skills were learned before your time in the Chantry? I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. I think there's more to it than that, but it sounds like we'll get into that more later on. Uh, Sten. Why are we stopping? Let's learn more about you. Uh, we're working together. I think I should get to know you. There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? I mean, if this guy's going to be on watch, I don't want him stabbing me in my sleep like the other family. Yeah. I need to know if I can trust you at my back. I am Kunari. I have given my word to aid you. We are not people of idle promises. I've never seen a Quinari before. Tell me about your people. No. <laughs> I love that. No. No. Why not? People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy eared people who excel at poverty. <laughs> who excel at poverty? You said you were in the army. I am. Have you ever fought in a war? I have always fought in war, human. What do you mean by that? My people have been at war since the moment we set foot in the Northern Islands. So the Kunari don't come from the islands? We do now. Where did you come from before? Somewhere else. <laughs> Can you be more specific? No. I was born in Saharon. Of the land we came from, I know nothing, not even its name. I do not see how this matters. Saharon and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. Are you alright? You were in that cage for weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. Alright. As you wish. Well... Uh... How about Alistair? What do you need? Ask away. What can a Templar do, exactly? Essentially, they're trained to fight. Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. So, couldn't others learn those talents? Perhaps. But there usually isn't much of an opportunity. 
The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given Lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves, uh -huh. well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. So it's a power grab in a way. Um, so you were addicted to this Lyrium? Thankfully, no. You only start receiving Lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. Hmm. Anything else? What do you need? Ask away. Uh, can you teach others to be a Templar? I suppose I could. But I really would rather not. When the Grand Cleric let Duncan recruit me, she made me swear never to reveal Templar secrets outside of the Chantry. I'd rather not go back on my word. Alright, so the Grand Cleric is, uh, I guess, the, the revered mother of Denerim, who's like the bishop. Or archbishop, I guess. Um... So this is tough. So I want to respect his word, but at the same time, that talent could be useful for like Sten. But I'll say very well, I, I respect your word. Ask me later, perhaps. Maybe I'll change my mind. Sounds good. This is not something small you're asking, after all. Yeah, I get it. All right, a few more conversations, what do you need? then we'll move on. Can we save Ask some for away. later? Uh, tell me about the Grey Wardens. Such as they are. Where are the nearest Grey Wardens from here? That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlay, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the Free Marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Is there a headquarters somewhere? Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Demerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. So what happens now? There's just two of us. I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden, and even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the Blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. It's a big burden. Uh, will we need to start rebuilding the Order? I mean, eventually we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining, or what's involved. I know it involves Lyrium and some other magic, and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. Alright. No more questions. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need? Ask away. Um, so you said this Arl Yemen raised you. Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Mm -hmm. That would explain the smell. Well, it wasn't until I was eight that I discovered you didn't have to lick yourself clean. Old habits die hard, you know. So does a horde of darkspawn, I'm told. Hmm. Point taken. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. <laughs> My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him any more for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. Why did he send you to the Chantry? 
Al Eamon eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Um, what an awful thing to do to a child. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence. I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. Are you sure he isn't your father? Yes, I'm quite sure. At any rate, I don't look anything like him. You'll see for yourself. Not that it stopped the rumors any. All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Caelan's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. All right. I think that's probably enough chit-chat for now. I'm going to take a few minutes, see if there actually is a chest you can put your stuff in, and if there is, how I get it. And uh, after that, we'll be on our way, probably to Redcliffe, but I'm not entirely certain. So I will see you guys then.